Example 1. Confidence interval for claim about two treatment groups. Given the two sample portions of success for the e-cigarette treatment group and the nicotine replacement treatment group, out of 438 e-cigarette treatment group, 79 were successful at not smoking after 52 weeks. Out of 446 nicotine replacement treatment group, 44 were successful at not smoking after 52 weeks. Use the sample data given to construct a 95% confidence interval estimate of the difference between the two population proportions. What does the result suggest about the claim that there is no difference in success rates between the two treatment groups? Well, first we need to identify the following. We're going to let the e-cigarette group be the population one. So we're going to let that be population one. So, and in that we know X1 is 79 and N1 is 438. Okay. And then we're going to let the nicotine replacement group be population 2. And so X2 is 44 and N2 is 446. Okay. So now what we want to do is we want to find out what is the point estimate for the cigarette group, for the e-cigarette group. So the point estimate for that is taking X1 divided by N1, and that's 79 divided by 438 which gives us 0 0.180365. And then the point estimate for the nicotine replacement group is X2 divided by N2, and that's 44 divided by 446. Round into six decimal places gives us 0 0.098655. Now the requirements. Well, the description of the selection of study subjects and the random assignment to groups confirms that the two samples can be treated as simple random samples for the purposes of this analysis. Number two, the two samples are independent because subjects in the samples are not matched or paired in any way. And number three, consider a success to be a smoker who is not smoking after 52 weeks. For the e-cigarette group, the number of successes is 79, and the number of failures is 438 minus 79, which is 359. So they are both at least five. For the nicotine replacement group, the number of successes is 44, and the number of failures, 446 minus 44 is equal to 402. So they are both at least five. Therefore, the requirements are satisfied. Okay, now in step three, we wanna be able to find the critical value. Now, the confidence level for the confidence interval. Okay, so they're asking us to uh, construct a 95% confidence interval estimate. So it's a 95% confidence interval estimate, and we also know that it's two-tailed. So the claim is that there is no difference in success rates between the two treatment groups can be tested with a 0 0.05 significance level by constructing a 95% confidence interval. So therefore, we're going to be using the 95% confidence interval because this is a two-tailed test. So we need to do is find out what alpha is going to represent and then alpha divided by 2. Well, alpha is equal to 1 minus 0 0.95 for the 95%, which is equal to 0 0.05. And then if we take that alpha of 0.05 and divide that by 2, that gives us 0.025. So let's go ahead and correct that there. This should be 0.025. And so that's going to be what we get in both tails. So if we draw our distribution, and we want to find the critical value here and the critical value here, knowing that this area represents 0 0.025 and this area over here represents 0 0.025. Then we're going to go ahead and then use the calculator here. So we go to stack, stack crunch, go to stat, calculators, and scroll all the way down to normal. And then 
If we want to find the critical value on the right hand side, we're going to just go ahead and put this as greater than or equal to, and then we're going to put in the area of 0 0.025, and that gives us 1.96. So that gives us positive 1.96 over here, and then negative 1.96 over here. What we're concerned is, is for the positive value. So therefore, we want to use this as our critical value, as 1.96. Okay, now in step four, we want to find the margin of error that corresponds to a 95% confidence interval with the following. We know that the critical value is 1.96. We know that the point estimate is 0 0.180365. To find the complement of that point estimate of population one, 1 minus 0 0.180365 gives us 0 0.819635. Point estimate for population 2 is 0 0.098655. The complement of that point estimate is 1 minus 0 0.098655, which gives us 0 0.901345. We know the sample size for population 1 is 438, and the sample size for population 2 is 446. Okay, now what we're going to do is we want to be able to find the margin of error. So we're going to do the following. We first take our critical value, which is 1.96, and then we're going to multiply that by the point estimate of 1, which is point estimate 1.180365, and then we're going to multiply that by the complement of that point estimate, which is 0 0.819635. And then we're going to divide that number by the sample size of population 1, which is 438. Okay, now we're going to add that and then now add and in the numerator here, we're going to take point estimate 2, which is 0 0.098655. And then we're going to multiply that by the complement of that, which is 0 0.901345. And then we're going to divide that by the sample size for the population 2, which is 446. So now let's go ahead and plug this into our calculator. Okay, so we're going to take the second square root, and then we're going to contain this first fraction in the parentheses. So we're going to have one parenthesis, and then we're going to use another parenthesis to contain the multiplication in the numerator. And so we're going to take 0.180365. And then we're going to multiply that by 0.819635. And then we're going to divide that by 438. And then close the parentheses. So that closes that entire fraction. Now, I need to come back here and make sure that I put the parentheses after that one. And then I'm going to have divide that by 438 and then close that parentheses. Now I'm going to hit plus because I'm adding here. Then I'm going to add another parentheses. And then another one here to be 0 0.098655 times 0 0.901345. Close the parenthesis, divide that by 446, and then close the parenthesis there. And then I'm going to shift over and I'm going to press enter. Now I'm going to take this number because that's the square root of everything underneath here and multiply it by 1.96. And that gives me the following rounded to six decimal places. It gives me 0 0.045415 and that represents the margin of error. Okay, now in step five, we want to find the 95% confidence interval estimate of the two treatment groups with the following. We know that the point estimate of 0 0.180365 for one, point estimate two is 0 0.098655, and the margin error we just found to be 0 0.045415. Okay, so what we're going to do is the following. We're going to take the point estimate for one, and then we're going to subtract the point estimate of two in parentheses. And then we're going to subtract the margin of error here for the lower limit. For the upper limit, we're again going to take point estimate 1, and then we're going to subtract 
point estimate 2, and then we're going to add the margin of error here. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and put our numbers in here. So let's go ahead and put this in our calculator. So for here, for our lower limit, we're going to do the following. We have parentheses 0 0.18. 0.0365 minus 0 0.098655 and that close that parentheses and then we're going to subtract the margin of error to get 0 0.045415 and that gives us that value there okay now let's find that's the lower limit now let's find the upper limit over here so if we want to find the upper limit what we can do is just come up here Press enter if you're using this calculator and then just change this to a addition because we're just adding this part now everything else is kept the same and therefore we get that so with our confidence intervals we have to round them to three decimal places so the lower limit is going to be 0 0.036 the upper limit is going to be 0 0.127 so if we check our lower limit round it to three decimal places this should be 0 0.036 And over on the right, it should be 0 0.127. And let me go ahead and make sure that's rounded to three decimal places there. So now we want to state our conclusion. Okay, now the confidence interval limits do not contain zero. Because if you look at this value here and this value here, zero is not in that interval. Therefore, suggesting that it is very unlikely that P1 minus P2, which is equal to zero, is not in this confidence interval. So we would say that there is, significant, there is a significant difference between the two proportions. We should therefore reject the null hypothesis of P1, which is equal to P2. So we are 95% confident that the confidence interval does not contain the e-cigarette and nicotine replacement treatment groups have different success rates. It appears that the e-cigarette and nicotine replacement treatment groups have different success rates. Now there is a caution here when we're doing and using uh, confidence intervals. Um, the use of one confidence interval uh, don't test for equality of two population proportions by determining whether there is an overlap between two individual confidence interval estimates of the two individual population proportions. So when compared to the confidence interval estimate of P1 minus P2, the analysis of overlap between two individual confidence intervals is more conservative by rejecting equality less often. And it has less power because it is less likely to reject P1 minus P2, when in reality P1 is not equal to P2.